Hi, this is Scott, and today we're looking at something um, that is a bit of a peculiarity. Uh, when I was doing my tests of the Panasonic S5, and in particular I was looking at the new firmware 4.0 on the Fuji X-T3, and I had it in head detect mode, uh, I noticed that the uh, Fuji now, and they say this in the manual as well when you look, the new section of the manual, now exposes for the head uh, when you're in uh, head and eye detect. Which, if you look at my <laughs> uh, Fuji X-T3 version uh, 4 firmware video, you can see there are pluses and minuses to that. But I also noticed that there is a um, exposure variance between the two cameras, um, which was kind of like frustrating to me. Uh, so what I've done here in this particular setup here is I went back to my trusted light meter from my photography uh, days. Uh, it's ancient but it's accurate and I trust its accuracy uh, more than either one of these cameras. Um, I've used it for flash photography for years and I know to this day it still gives me good exposures. And if I put it on my face here and I balance my lights, I sat there and read each side, made sure they were exactly uh, the same. And so if I do a simple center reading pointed at the lenses, I get a 50th second F5 at a 640 ISO. So I set these cameras both to 640 ISO, a 50th of a second shutter speed appropriate to the 23.98 uh, FPS that I'm using and they are both set to f5. The Fuji has the 18 to 55 lens on it set to 23 so it's roughly 35 millimeters full frame equivalent and the Panasonic has the 20 to 60 set to 35 millimeter. So one would expect I should be getting comparable exposures um, from each one but I tend to see a variance uh, because the Fuji right now is telling me it's at a minus 0.6 while the Panasonic is telling me the exposure is perfect. So the Fuji is, is literally two-thirds of a stop underexposed. Looking at my little monitors, that appears to be true. So that's one of the things um, that I'm going to look at, but I'm going to put these up against each other. So we're looking at them side by side, and we're going to see, is the Fuji really requiring two-thirds more light to give us a similar exposure uh, to the Panasonic, or not to beat the point, but what my meter thinks it should be based on the light hitting my face. So we're going to look at that. So I'm going to take these to the computer and take a look, see what we come up with. Okay, it is what it is. It was showing that the Fuji was coming up darker, same settings darker, whether it was lens or camera or whatever the Fuji's doing, I don't know. Um, but it's something to factor in. Uh, as I like to put it, you're the brain behind your camera. You need to understand what your camera's doing. So when your camera's making a decision, you know what kind of decisions you might have to make. So obviously I couldn't sit there and use my meter and take readings and set the Fuji and sit there and say I'm good. Um, the Panasonic was being true uh, to my readings, or certainly a lot better than the Fuji was. Uh, so it is what it is. Uh, if anybody has any insights as to why the Fuji appeared darker, if there's something I did wrong or a setting um, 
that I could have done differently um, that would make it be more true to uh, what a light meter uh, gives me as the Panasonic behaved, um, I would be happy to hear that. So please share that uh, for me and anyone else uh, reading. Um, otherwise, if you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you like this kind of contact, contact, content, I can talk. Uh, <laughs> please subscribe. Uh, I don't have affiliate links or anything, so if you'd like to encourage me, there's a PayPal link below where you could buy me a coffee or send me a buck. Anything is always appreciated. Uh, it does take some time to put these things together. I do them for myself anyways, but I'm sharing them with you, which makes it a little bit more effort to make that happen. So I hope you liked it. I'll talk to you next time. Uh, see you then.